opportunity on behalf of Pastor Sister Heidi Ball and True Tabernacle for all our visitors. Welcome to our service this morning. Thank you for coming and joining with us. We're so excited that you could be with us. Amen. Amen. And we're apostolic and we believe in the power of prayer. Amen. We're going to take our petition before the Lord right now. Uh, Cody Neese, his friend Cody's father, David Goodlett has had a heart attack this morning and is waiting to have some further tests. So if you can lift up David Gillette for this and these tests, amen, want the Lord to touch, comfort him, be with him on recovery. Amen. Uh, remember Sister Lyle, as far as her recovery from having her knee replaced, we want to lift her up and the Lord to move there. Sister Rachel Niece is requesting prayer for Mike Crow, who has been battling cancer for quite a while. However, he's going through some tests for some Another form of cancer has, another cell has manifested itself. But we know God is able to heal. Amen. Matter of fact, he bore those stripes for our healings. Amen. Continue to lift up. Remember Sister Anderson. Amen. She has been battling some physical needs, some pain. Sister Tiffany Clark as well. We lift her up. The Lord will continue to touch her. Amen. Uh, Brother Robinette's brother-in-law, Bruce. Amen. Is a... Uh, been diagnosed with throat cancer, but we know the Lord is able. We want to lift up Bruce, Brother Robinette's brother-in-law, and I'm probably going to butcher this last name, but Sister Jessica, Jessica's, it's a friend, Nikki, Nikki Barbera, uh, is battling, has, has been diagnosed with breast cancer, and they've done surgery there. We want the Lord to touch, move, and minister there. That his healing virtue will continue to touch and move down and rain down upon her. Amen. And uh, God is good. Brother Rob. Amen. Remember Sister uh, Brainerd. Amen. I know Brother Bobby, Pastor filled in this morning for him with the Lord to touch and uh, minister there. I know it's been going around. It's it's hit our house. Amen. And uh, But we know God is able. Amen. Sister, you got a prayer request? She's got a friend, Linda, amen, has had a heart attack, amen. Believe in the power of prayer. Believe in praying and pleading the blood, amen. But also, you know, the Bible says, you know, we're gathered together, the oil is here, and it's by faith. If you want prayer, if you want to take up a hedge, bridge that gap, amen, we'll anoint and we'll pray, amen, let the Lord touch and move and minister, amen. I never want to miss an opportunity when somebody needs prayer. We ran into Sharon Martin at the grocery store yesterday. She, I know years ago, she used to go to this church. She stopped me and my wife, amen, and said, remember her in her prayer. She has been diagnosed with leukemia as well. So let's lift up Sharon Martin as well. Amen. But the power of God is in this place. Amen. Amen. And we're going to demonstrate our faith right now by praying. Amen. If you need prayer, you want to take up that hedge, that gap, we're going to lift up these names. We're going to pray and plead the blood right now. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord, standing here, Lord, upon your word, Lord. 
that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord. We believe in you for all things, Lord. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life, Lord. You're the bomb of Gilead, Lord. You're the great physician, Lord. We pray right now and plead your blood upon every name lifted up here, every diagnosis, Lord. Every name mentioned here, Lord. We know that you hold all power in us, Lord. you won't breathe Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Yes, Lord, let us see that victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. God, we serve such a presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Smile at your neighbors. You're being seated. God is good. Amen. This evening at 530, amen, the end time prophecy class will be meeting here at the basement. Amen. If you have any questions, see Brother or Sister Banks on that. Amen. Tuesday is our corporate prayer and fast day. Remember that. We are praying for revival. We are praying for souls to be changed. Amen. What a mighty God. Amen. And on the 26th, I better get to Wednesday first. We have uh, Kids Power Hour and, and uh, Bible study on Wednesday night. My mind's going to, I just want the Lord to move tonight. Amen. His presence in this place. He's going to do something this morning. Amen. God is good. We have our Bible study and we have our kids' power out on hour on Wednesday. Come be a part of that. Uh, pastor's been really doing some great teaching. The kids as well have been getting some great teaching downstairs as well. Amen. God is so good. If you looked in your bulletin on the 26th, I don't even know what day that is. 
But the 26th, they will be having the new things recovery here at the church at 6 o'clock. If you have any questions, you can't see the banks on that. Uh, but God is good. And uh, man, God is good. There's such a presence of the Lord in here right now. But uh, we're going to we're gonna be still be apostolic, but little birdie says it's going to be Brother Rob Branner's birthday tomorrow. Amen. So we are going to sing happy birthday to Brother Rob. If you could join us. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus here every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best year that you've ever had. Oh, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise, happy birthday, Brother Rob. Amen. You look good for 32, brother. Amen. God is good on that note. Our ushers are going to come. Amen. We're going to give unto the Lord. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed. In his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. We cannot outgive God, and God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And there's nothing like investing in the kingdom of God. Amen. Lord, bless this offering, Lord, and bless the giver. That multiply for the furthering of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our God is great and glorious. And we put our trust in your name, Jesus. Able to save and deliver. Glory and power run to our 
Hallelujah. Holy, holy. God Almighty. God Almighty. Yeah. Oh, let's clap our hands and praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory. You are worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. Hallelujah. Will somebody shout hallelujah? Praise God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I'm glad to know today that no matter what we face, we have a God that's able to help us overcome. Let me say it again. I don't, I don't care what kind of day we're having or what kind of day it is. I'm glad that we have a God that is able to help us overcome. <clears throat> Nobody like Him. Praise God. And we live in a day and time of uncertainty, but that's in the world. And that might be our mentality as a person because we are in this world. But I'm glad we can say we might be in it, but we're not of it. Because one day the Lord's going to come for His church and we're out of here. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Amen. We are going to, if I might say it this way, exit the premises of this world and enter into that place that God has prepared for His church and for His people. How many is looking forward to that day? Praise God. Praise God. What a day that shall be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon His face, the one who saved me by His grace. When He takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day. Glorious day that will be. Praise God. My question today, do you have his hand? Does he have your hand? Are you ready for that moment? Hey, how many knows it could happen before we leave this place today? Amen. It could happen. Amen. So our heart must be right with the Lord. Habakkuk, if you will, today, the third chapter. <laughs> I apologize for you that already had to listen to me for 40 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, but you have to listen to me again for another little bit. I'll try not to be as lengthy to wear you out, but uh, praise God. God is good. We thank you for being here today. In Habakkuk, the third chapter, verses 17 to 19. If you'll read along with me. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength. And He will make my feet like hinds feet. And He will make me to walk upon the high places. Written to the chief singer of my stringed instruments. Lord God, we thank You for this moment in time. I pray that next little bit Your Word will have an impact in our hearts and lives. Amen. And help us to grow in you, God. I pray for those here today that have not made their election sure that sometime in the next little bit, Lord, amen, their heart will be stirred by your presence and feel the necessity and the need, amen, to get right with you, amen, or make things, make some corrections in their life, whatever it might be. I pray, God, that you will do that in the next little bit. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here today as you're being seated. There are a 
very few statements in all of history that can rival the defiance of faith that Habakkuk utters here. However, for this kind of faith or this such faith to shine out like this, there has to be a backdrop of darkness for the magnificence of this kind of defiant faith to appear. So look with me as I consider some of the things that were going on in Habakkuk's days. The dilemma that he was in, that the people were in. A little history here about this. Number one, war and devastation shrouded the land of Judah. The Chaldeans were about to take over the city of Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem were about to be breached by this powerful enemy. The temple of Solomon was going to be defiled. The country was sitting on the precipice of ruin. The flocks were being raided by roving bands and people, rustlers as we would call them. The farmland was no longer being cultivated because of a sloth and a drought. Josiah's godly reforms were now being entirely overturned by Jehoiakim's wicked rule. And when you read through the whole book of Habakkuk, you can do that in one sitting. The prophet begins to paint a picture, a very grim picture. In fact, it's a very depth of discouragement that this prophet seems to be writing about. It's almost like there is no room for hope. In fact, his questions roar to such an extent that would appear to put God in a difficult place. Where is the God of Israel? Where is the sign of God's presence? Where is his watchfulness over his people? What blessing is to be gained from serving God. How, how much longer can faith hold out? How, how, how much judgment can the people withstand? Hard questions. Hard questions that were asked in a very dark day. In fact, it sort of reminds us, if I might say, a little bit of our day that we live in today. Can a saint serve God? In this day and time. You're getting quiet. You weren't this quiet first session. Can we serve God, Brother Tyler, when the gas is the price is that it is? Can we serve God when the food on the shelf is higher? Quite significantly higher than what it was. Can, can, a, can a saint of God serve on the onslaught of all the stuff like abortion and things of that nature that is plaguing our country and not only our country but the world? One statistic I wrote, read was an average of 4,000 per day or one every 22 seconds. Pastor, that's not politically correct. You shouldn't say things like that. Well, Everybody's going to still have to answer to God for it. I do thank God for grace and I thank God for mercy and I thank God for forgiveness because we can find that in God. But the world as a whole is going to have to answer. Can a saint of God make it in a world or in a nation that is becoming more increasingly friendly to the sins? The disgusting sins that the enemy propagates onto the people. Can we live in a world where Christianity now is the target and the world is hostile towards Christians because we will not, turn to your neighbor and say, I will not, adopt 
to their principles and what they are spewing. We must not give in. We must not stand down. If we're going to survive in this world, we got to exalt the things of God, not the lifestyles and the wickedness, uh, amen, of this world that's being pumped into our homes and into our minds on a daily basis. Can a saint of God make it in a nation uh, that has mounting economic issues and pressures of the world that are climbing? Can a saint of God find solace in a nation who court seems to favor sin over righteousness and shame over uprightness? Can a saint of God really serve when jobs are lost and the levels of unemployment begin to rise? Can a saint of God make it when the pulpits of America have almost become totally devoid of an understanding of what sound doctrine is? It's okay. How much longer can the industry, if I might say, of false teachers not capsize an undiscerning church? Folks, let me tell you something right now. You have to make up in your mind who you are going to serve. One or the other, you will serve God and the things of God. Or you're going to serve the devil and the things of the world. You can't serve both God and mammon too, the Bible says. You're going to hate one and love the other. Can we serve God in this day and time? We could go on. We could bring more questions. I'm sure you could fill some out too. Until we ran out of time to show just how dark the days are in our day and time. And they are dark. And Habakkuk writes that the fig tree blossoms have not come out. The fruit of the vines and the trees, they have failed to materialize. The olive trees have failed to give out the oil. The fields are barren. There's no produce found. The flocks have been cut off from the fold due to the neglect of the shepherds. If there are no shepherds, the sheep will die. Well, no, they got grass to eat. They got, they've, got, they've got all this other stuff. They got water to drink. But if there is no shepherd to protect them from the ravenous wolves and the beast of the field, they will die. So I stand here today in a place to depict or paint a picture of our world that we live in that simply says, as it did to Habakkuk, amen, that the world that we live in is getting darker and darker and darker by the moment. Sin sells and sin flourishes at every turn. But in the midst of all of this, there has to become a faith, a defiant faith that reaches above the circumstances uh, that you're going through uh, that's been created by the disobedience of, of the nation. Uh, and Habakkuk allows it, uh, amen, to begin to run or march or flow from out of his soul. Think about it. Habakkuk declares that his confidence is not in what he sees. But rather, his confidence is in what he cannot see. Hear me. We talked a little bit about it in the first session. Amen. About how you have to have a firewall that is the gatekeeper that controls the flow of information that's coming in and going out. It's that Word of God. It's the Holy Ghost that is that gatekeeper. But you have to define it. Not the Holy Ghost, but you have to define what am I going to allow into my life? 
That's a problem. I think we, turn to your neighbor and say he's talking to us. I think we fail many times in that category. We let way too much information into our life that should not be allowed. So he declares his confidence and not what he sees, but on what he cannot see. Because God, everybody say God. God is still in charge of, of everything. And he understood God's still in charge. Even though I can't see it. What I'm looking at looks like destruction. But my hope is in God. The God that can see me through it. If you believe that, clap your hands and praise him this morning. Let me give you three thoughts about faith. In all of his writings and the discourse that Habakkuk wrote, there are some underlying things that we find out about faith. Number one, he said faith. Faith has its own logic. Faith has its own logic that is from heaven. It's not of this world. No matter how dark the picture can be, no matter how difficult the times are, no matter what all the statistics say, faith has a logic that is born from heaven. Burdens. How many felt like you've been burdened down by the cares of life? You know, they can, they can, they can, they can weigh down the, the hardiest of believers. In fact, the cart, sometimes you felt like, man, that's, that's just one too many straws, right? But faith, faith has, the, faith has the ability to bear it all. Well, how can you say that? Well, let, let, let me give you some illustrations. Sarah offered up her elderly body, and a son came out. Moses offered a rod and a staff. To lead the sheep, but a serpent broke forth. Gideon offered 300 men who had trumpets and pitchers and lamps. And a nightmare occurred in the enemy's camp. And 120,000 Midianites were destroyed. Samson picked up the jawbone of a donkey. Killed 1,000 Philistines. David picked up a slingshot. He left a bear... Uh, Behind a lion and a bear, and he put that stone in the forehead of a giant. The Bible in modern day life is full of even more examples when we look at it, amen, of people allowing their faith to break through when they look to God instead of the circumstances that they were in the middle of. How are we going to combat this spirit of this day and time? The last days. Everybody say the last days. How can we combat this? This that warns us, calm down, keep quiet, hide in the corner, don't speak your mind, just kind of just kind of stay out of the picture. We don't want to hear from the Christians. Don't get quiet on me. We don't want to hear from those people, those Jesus people. We don't want to hear from those people that pray. We don't want to hear from those people that are getting direction from the heavenly round. How are we going to do that? Well, let's go to Hebrews 4.12 because this is the solution. Here's what it says in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is what? Quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Folks, you want to make it, you got to pick up the sword of the spirit. You got to let it breathe live into your faith. You got to take God's word over everything that comes down the pipe. You got to let that faith fight for you. Because often it's hard conditions of life that actually can make your faith either one fall by the wayside or begin to soar into the heavenlies, into the things of God. 
And in reality we find that the greatest dilemma often, dilemma often create the greatest escape because faith has its own logic. Amen. Why? Because it comes from heaven. There's something about faith that will give a man a certain amount of persistence in the most intolerable circumstances. Come on now. Because Paul, of Paul, the opponent said that he was weak in his presence and his speech was contemptible in 2 Corinthians 10. But yet Paul was not depending on his presence of speech to accomplish what God wanted him to do. Because he comes along in 2 Timothy 1.12 and he begins to write that he has a great knowledge of who to believe in. He will put his confidence in God. Amen. Not man. Confidence in God. He said God will give you faith. He'll give you a faith uh, that the world will look at. And they'll say that's not logical. They will say oh that's simple. That's ridiculous. That you would believe in such a thing. They believe in the tangible, but you and I believe in the eternal things that you may not be able to see with your eye. But it's, yet it strengthens you every day. Don't trust in this world, it will fail you. That old song, I can't remember. I don't know why these things keep coming into my mind like this. But there was a song that went something like, put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee or something like that. Don't ask me to go on. That's all I know. It just came in my head. But that's the truth, Brother Howard. Put your hand in the one that can lead and guide you through the darkest times of your life when you can't see what's going on and all you are is in the midst of a dark circumstance that you don't know what's going to happen, but yet you've got a hold of the hand of the one that can lead you through that. Right? Well, clap your hands if you believe that today. Hallelujah. A confidence in God that will give you faith that the world will not look at and, 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 and tell you it's not logical. They'll say, that's crazy, that's unbelievable. But faith is a mystery even to you and I as a saint of God. Because faith has its own logic, faith is a mystery sometimes even to us. If you tried to attempt to define faith, I'm sure that we could go to Hebrews 11.1 1, to find what we mean by faith when it says... Now faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And while that's certainly a good and solid theological answer, there is still an inability for us to really grasp really what faith is all about. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you know faith? Faith charges in often when it comes in when we are not even aware of it working for us. It comes to our rescue when the world appears to be on the brink of what Habakkuk was writing about. That kind of faith is, is a mystery to all of us because when we get on the other side, on the other side of that situation or that dilemma or that problem or that circumstance, we can know that God, God was with us. We recognize that. I've had people tell me recently, hey, I went through this and, and, and all of a sudden I realized it was God. God will help us. But the fact is that we usually do not have good, a good explanation of what, of what just happened or what just transpired or where that relief came from. We just know God did it. We just know it happened. I, I'm here to tell you today in this service that God, you may not understand it all, but if you will just give your heart to God and just allow God to come and kind of interrupt your life a little bit, I promise you that God will come in to your life, your circumstance, your situation, your sickness, your problem, whatever it is. You might not understand how. But when you get through it, you'll say, I don't understand it, but God did it. 
God was with me. Could be a stormy sea where the boat's about ready to capsize, but he can say, peace be still. It could be strongholds in our mind, amen, that are forbidding passage, but God can get way, give, make it give way and get through to you. There's huge, huge diabolical kingdoms uh, that are in our world that will defy our efforts. Uh, amen. Try to come against us and keep us from serving God. But yet God says, I have all power in heaven and earth. Uh, amen. If you allow me to reside in your life, uh, I will give you the strength to overcome. Lions roar all the time. People shake with fear. But yet we have a God that's able to close the mouths of fires all around us trying to engulf us and destroy us swords mocking scourging bonds imprisonment look at the early church it was all there constantly every day taunting them this is what's going to happen to you this is what's going to happen to you amen the little imps the little devils, as they come by your way, you're never going to get through. You're never going to overcome this. You're never going to make it. <laughs> I've got power over you. He only has the power that you give him. But when you decide to stand up on your own two feet and say, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. And you say, I'm not going to succumb to the evil one. I'm not going to succumb to his uh, devices. Uh, I'm not going to fall prey to his uh, trickery. Uh, I'm going to stand firm. Uh, I'm going to stand on the word of God. I might fall flat on my face, uh, but I'm going to get back up uh, and still believe in the power and the awesomeness of God. Oh, clap your hands and praise him today. Come on, if you believe that, raise your voice up. Tell him, I believe the word. The fact remains that when you read the closing portion of Hebrews chapter 11, not a single one of these things, not a single one of these things we're able to consume the faith of the church. Your faith is a mystery. You can't explain it. I only grasp a portion of what Luke wrote in Acts 1.8 when he simply said the power of the Holy Ghost. He said it's going to come on you. That power of the Holy Ghost. Being a prevailing witness to this world going to come on you. Clothed in tongues like as a fire. You're going to receive a power. It's going to come on you. And you're going to be witnesses to the faith. It's going to start from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts. Do you think today mystery of faith. You know, faith, how many's ever had a what we call a fair weathered friend? How many knows what a fair weathered friend is? They're with you during the good times. But when you hit the bad times, for all of our Spanish friends, adios amigo. Right? They're gone. They're out of here. They're like, eh, it's a tough time now. We're not sticking around. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, God is determined for you and I, everyone, every single one of us. He wants us. He wants us. He wants us. Turn to your neighbor and say, He wants you to have a good report. So whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Let's stand. I'm going to quit. I believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? 
I challenge you, believe the report of the Lord. Why? Because it's His report that says, I'm free. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what the world's telling you. I don't care what the devil's telling you. I don't care what society, I don't care if it's your family. I don't care what they tell you. You must believe in the report of the Lord. And that's what this is all about today. Is you being able to get a hold of his hand and say, you know what? I'm going to believe that, Brother Marky. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe that. Greater is he that's in me than he's in the world. No matter what I face, no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the problem is, no matter what I'm, what I'm facing in this world, no matter what the enemy's coming against me with, amen, I'm going to believe in the report of the Lord because he says I can be free. <laughs> he says I can be free. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to receive that. I'm going to get a hold of that. Day by day, moment by moment, situation from situation to situation, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord because I know that everything's going to work out. Because he's not just like a fair-weathered friend. He's going to be with me. As long as I'm traveling on this world and beyond. He's going to be with me. He'll be with me in the sunny days and he'll be with me in the dark days. Sometimes it's a day full of blessing. And then sometimes it's a day full of storms. Some days are going to be adverse conditions and circumstances. But yet my faith during those moments must be defiant. I want my faith to dictate where I stand. I want the strength of the Lord. Daniel, the third chapter, verses 17 to 18. Here's the three Hebrew children. Bow down and worship. Nah, can't do that. We only bow down to one God. We serve one God. We ain't bowing down to man or to an image that man makes. But we know that we serve a God who's able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, everybody shout, but if not. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Faith can be a place of protection. No matter what you're facing, no matter how scary it is, No matter how unnerving, there will come protection into your life. See, here it is. Let me let let me quit with this. Hell, the hell made mistake. And their mistake with the three Hebrew boys was putting them in the fire together. I like that scripture that says, where two or three, two or three are gathered together in my sake, in my name. There I will be in the midst of them. You you got an issue today? You're in the right place. Why? Because we have more than two or three. We got a few people that can help pray with you and help believe with you. His mistake was letting them get in the furnace together. And I close with this. His mistake today, Brother Tyler is allowing you and I to come together to worship. There is strength in numbers. So they're going to sing and I'm going to open these altars. 
I want you to come. Fill them. Kneel at the pews. You got something you need from God? Step forward. You believe that they can receive what they came here for? You need to get out of your pew and come to the altar as well and raise your hands and support them in prayer and ask God to minister to them. Come on, folks. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come. Everything else outside of these four walls can wait for the moment. Come and find a place to pray. Lift up the name of the Lord. No matter where you're at, spot somebody. Begin to pray. Call their name out before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Enough to seek your kingdom first. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Beyond the barren place, beyond the ocean. Hallelujah, Lord. When I walk the Come on, let's believe today. Believe today. Believe today. to see it too. 